our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb co-wrote numerous books with Dr. D. James Kennedy that dealt with the central role of Christianity in the settling and founding of America. He's also the co-author of the best-selling book, George Washington's Sacred Fire, dealing with the deep Christian convictions of the father of our country. Jerry joins us now to discuss the importance of America's Christian foundation. Jerry, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Good to be with you. Really, children are being taught that the pilgrims gave thanks to the Indians at the first Thanksgiving? Well, you know, in today's politically correct milieu, they're rewriting our history and telling it wrong. But the pilgrims did give thanks to God for the Indians, and they gave thanks to God for everything, including the crops at harvest time, which is what the first Thanksgiving was all about. In fact, it was a three-day celebration, and the Indians participated with them, and they enjoyed good times together. But the bottom line is the pilgrims developed the Christian habit, as the Bible says, give thanks in all circumstances, and they were thankful in all circumstances. And this was after the year before, during that winter, half their number had died from diseases. And so they were giving thanks despite how bleak some things had turned out to be. Okay, so this was almost 400 years ago, and this was a group of people that had thankful hearts to God. Why does that make such a difference in, uh, as we think about our nation today? Well, it makes a huge difference in all kinds of different ways. I mean, just the fact that you opened up, you said, Happy Thanksgiving. This is an annual holiday. But I think the really, the single most important thing is this. When the pilgrims were blown off course and they were under no government's jurisdiction when they landed at Cape Cod, and what they did was they had earlier made a spiritual covenant binding one man to another and woman under God, okay? They made this covenant, a biblical type covenant, but it was a compact. And then what they did was they politicized that as they made an agreement in the Mayflower cabin before they even disembarked. They made an agreement called the Mayflower Compact, and it was the first step in the process of the U.S. creating its own constitution. In fact, it was the first of about a hundred or so compacts, frames of government, charters, and so forth, uniquely leading the way to the constitution. So you go from we whose names are underwritten, which is what they said in the, in the Mayflower Compact, 1620, to we the people in 1787. In the name of God, amen. That's how they began that Mayflower Compact. The pilgrims recognized that civil government is something that God sanctions and even ordains. Yes. And they were concerned though, because based on their Christian understanding of human nature, that just any old government wouldn't do. It would have to have certain attributes to really defend against the, the, the wrong side of our nature. What, what were some of the things they did to protect? Well, in the example of the, the pilgrims, they themselves had to, you know, they realized that the Bible teaches man is sinful, but they also realized the Bible teaches that God makes covenants with his people and his people makes covenants with God. And so using that model, they were the first to create this self-government, a charter for self-government in the example of the Mayflower Compact. And so they started the process of constitutional government. And by the time you get to Philadelphia in 1787, the founding fathers, uh, having a biblical worldview, not all of them necessarily being born again, but having this Christian view, knew that all men having power ought not to be trusted, mm -hmm. to quote James Madison. Ben Franklin said, if you had a hundred kings, a hundred kings, only one of them would not tend to be like Pharaoh, grabbing all the power to himself. John Adams, second, found, or second president and a key founding father, he said, all men having power are like ravenous beasts. So in other words, what the founders did, the founders of America in 1787, they protected us one man from the other. And the pilgrims, again, started this whole process of constitutional making. Jerry, these people took a, what we would look at today, a desperate voyage, oh, yeah. a long journey in sailing ships across the Atlantic Ocean and arriving really 
at the beginning of the stormy season in the North Atlantic. And uh, it was the hand of God that secured their, their safe passage. But what was their motivation for leaving in the first place? Well, they said it actually in the Mayflower Compact, November 11, 1620. They said that they did this for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. Now think about this. D. James Kennedy himself once said this. He said, America began as a church relocation project. And he was talking specifically about the pilgrims. The pilgrims were just one congregation, a congregation that had begun in the heart of England in 1606. They wanted to worship Jesus in the purity of the gospel, but it was illegal to do that. King James I put a lot of persecution on those groups. It was basically stick with the Church of England, conform, or I'm going to punish you if you don't. They sent about 50 of their congregations in 1620 in the Mayflower, and uh, as you said, it was a stormy season and so forth, and half their number died that first winter, but they gave thanks to the Lord through it all, and they managed to create their, their colony in Plymouth, and it lasted, and they made peace, by the way, with the Indians, which lasted for 53 years, and it was not violated by them, it was violated at the Indian side of things, and they were just model Christian people in, in all ways you could imagine. Jerry, thank you very much. Thank you, and happy Thanksgiving, Frank. Thanks, same to you.